Welcome to episode 364 of the AMPM podcast. This week, my guest is John Durkitz. John worked for Amazon. He's worked for an aggregator. He's sold on his own. He consults. And we have a pretty in-depth discussion about everything from travel to starting newsletters. He's got a newsletter of his own to what we think is happening in this space to building brands and uh, raving fans. It's a really great discussion. I think you're going to get a lot of good value from this. Don't forget to also sign up for my newsletter. It's totally free. It's like a $25,000 mastermind in an email. It's totally free twice a week, billiondollarsellers.com. And like I discussed in this episode, I'm also doing a webinar on December 1st. Look for some information on that. It's a free webinar about how to set up a newsletter for your physical products business and do it right. What are the tools? What's the way to do it? What are the mistakes not to make? That's coming on December 1st, totally free webinar. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to the AMPM Podcast. Welcome to the AMPM Podcast. We explore opportunities in e-commerce. E-commerce. We dream big and we discover what's working right now. Plus, plus, this is the podcast where money never sleeps. Working around the clock in the AM and the PM. Are you ready for today's episode? I said, I said are, are you, you ready? Ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. Here's your host, Here's your host. Kevin King. Kevin King. John Durkitz, welcome to the AMPM podcast. I'm so excited to have you as a guest on the AMPM podcast. How are you doing, man? Kevin, I'm doing great, and I, I'm I'm pumped to be here. And I also can't help but notice that we both have maps in our background. Yours is a little bigger than mine, but <laughs> uh, I I don't know what the connection is there, but uh, we're both clearly world travelers and people that uh, study cultures. Yeah, I have a big one, a big wall mural. It's like 10 feet across on the wall of the world. And then I have, you can't see it, but I have another one on the side that has little pins in it, kind of like the one you have on the right to the right yeah. of you that has uh, everywhere I've been. I've been to 94 countries, so I've done a lot of travel. And then I have another one sitting right up here facing me that's like uh, similar to what you have there. Um, it's It's an old, it's like, I don't know, I think I paid like four grand for it. It's like 300 years old and it's like the, the Caribbean, an old map from like 300 years ago and some book that sailors had. It's all framed and everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm big into uh, maps and travel for sure. I, I'll tell you what, 94 countries is ridiculous. I have a lot of catching up to do, uh, but th- that's super cool. And uh, um, I'm sure we could talk about places that you visited all day. I got to say, one of the things I really love about your newsletter before we kind of get into anything is your stories of your travels. Uh, it's, it's such a unique way of kind of injecting your personality and voice into your newsletter. So I just wanted to give you props for that before we we meander here through a, a conversation. All right, yeah, I appreciate that. For, for those of you that don't know what he's talking about, it's the Billion Dollar Sellers newsletter, uh, which I've told everybody on here to actually go sign up for. It's like a mastermind, a free mastermind. Um, but on Thursdays, I do two a week. Mondays is more business oriented. Thursdays is a mix of business and personal. So I do a personal story. I call it the six second story. So it introduced it's and some of them are a little edgy. Some of them, uh, you know, I've had a few people unsubscribe because I talked about a naked girl on the balcony. Um, I've had a few other, but other people, they just love it. So I, I try to inject some of my, these, I talked about meeting Michael Jordan and uh, basically blocking him from, uh, from getting laid. Uh, and, you know, I talk about the whole, all kinds of stuff in there. I got tons of more. And then I, in that, that Thursday one, I do a, one, something called the dream 100, where I, I say, this is someone in the business that's, I have a list of 100 people. It's totally random out of a hat. I don't, uh, they're not in any particular order. And these are people you should pay attention to because there's so much, I'm sure we might talk about this, so many fake gurus and so much BS in the space. Like who is legit? Who's just trying to market themselves and get some money from you? And so I, I, I do that. And then I put a, a, a travel because I've been in all these countries. When I was traveling, I was shooting video uh, back. And it, I, I traveled basically for seven years. And I was gone two weeks of every month. Sometimes by myself, sometimes with friend or family, and I, I meant to do it for a year, but I just turned into my, to so cool. And I was like, "There's more places in this world I want to see. There's more stuff I'd hear about something else." I'm like, "I got to do it." So I, that's where a lot of that travel happened. Not all 94, but a lot of it. So I would leave for two weeks, come back for two weeks, uh, leave for two weeks, and you know, I could work remotely. Uh, I wasn't staying, you know, in Four Seasons, or I wasn't staying in hostels either. I was doing it. Right, but I was traveling around. I shot video. It wasn't here's Kevin eating a sandwich, or you know having a fun in a disco. It's I shot it more like documentary style. 
And so when I came back, this is before Instagram uh, existed, and I sent out an, an email, like a newsletter, if you will, uh, to about 45 people, uh, my family, uh, friends, and I, was, I would do a trip reports. So I would, I would I'd write a little trip report. Here's me, you know, here's Peru, and put some pictures. And I, I had a, edit, uh, a pr video production company at the time, and we had three full-time editors. And so sometimes we'd have a lull where they weren't doing something. So I'd say, edit my travel stuff. So they would edit like 20-minute travel shows, and I would I would write a script and have a professional voiceover person come in and voice it, voice it and then have this 20-minute video. Uh, of of you know me in Peru and it's more National Geographic style. It's not here's Kevin. You know it wasn't a sh look look how cool I was. More like a educational. And then I I said some people don't want to sit through a twenty minute video, but so I had them all create trailers for like uh, like two minutes long, and that's what I put in the newsletter every every Thursday. I put a two minute trailer that I personally shot. My team actually edited, and it goes and I put a little. I, I have all these trip reports from 10, 15 years ago mostly. And so, because uh, I quit doing this in 2014 as, as, as heavy, I still travel a lot, but as heavy. Um, and I go back and I just summarize those. I use AI a little bit to take those. They're already written. I was like, just shorten this up. Um, you know, here's, here's the paste it into chat GPT and just shorten this up. And then I tweak it a little bit. And those go in those Thursday newsletters. And the, the reason is to inspire people. We, a lot of us do this for the freedom or that we're doing this, you know, we don't want to work for the man. And, and I just want to let people, there's a big world out there that most people don't understand. You know, they've been to Mexico, maybe they've been to London, or maybe they went to the Canton Fair, but they really haven't seen how, what's out there in this world and how many amazing things there are. And to get that understanding of other cultures and other people, it just, it just makes you a better person. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do to influence in that, uh, with, with that. So that's, that's why that's in there. And, and it makes it a little bit personal. No, I, I love it. And it, it almost feels like Amazon is a side hustle to your life, uh, which is the right way to do it for the record, right? We're, we're all of us, we're kind of in this e-commerce Amazon game uh, to give ourselves the ability to live the life we want to live on the terms that we want to live. Um, exactly. And, and travel is clearly a big part of it for you. Um, and but you you're right. worked for Amazon for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, your, your backstory is that you actually work for Amazon, then you work for an aggregate. I mean, what is your story, actually? Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the two-minute version here, and I'll fast forward through the first decade of my career, which was uh, in kind of management consulting, M&A. Uh, turned out that that was really good foundational professional experience for jumping into an aggregator later. Uh, but my Amazon journey started at Amazon. Uh, I was kind of roped into leading the third-party marketplace for consumer electronics uh, on Amazon Canada. It was a role that when I looked at the, the job description, I thought to myself, number one, I'm way unqualified for this. <laughs> and number two, uh, is this the right path for my career? Because again, I, I kind of came from that finance world, that, that consulting world, very corporate. Um, and although Amazon was a, a beast back in 2016, uh, it, it was still a, a tech company, still, you know, a startup without being a startup. Uh, so I, I had some reservations about joining, but I knew that at that point in my career, if I didn't take a jump into something like that, I would never do it. The opportunity cost, the switching costs were too, would be too high as, as I advanced in my other career. So I jumped into Amazon and, uh, you know, it was a role that I grew to love and embrace. My role, unlike you know, I think a lot of people who worked at Amazon was truly focused on the third party marketplace. My role was to go out and recruit third party sellers to join the Amazon Canada marketplace. And then when they were on the marketplace, to nurture them, to help them grow, to get them to adopt new Amazon features. You're like um, in business development, basically. And I, like you had, you're the one that could say, I can get you lightning deals or I can get you this or <clears throat> we'll give you a X amount in PPC credit if you come over and we'll hold your hand for what that lasts what for a year, right? Or it's a calendar year. It's not even a whole year. So if you sign up like in September, they'll help you till December and then That's it's exactly resets right. or something like that, right? Yep. I had a team under me that were doing that business development work and I was kind of crafting the overall strategy. What brands did I want them to go get? What selection, what assortment on the marketplace were we lacking that we needed to fill? Um, and then I had a team of account managers who were hand-holding some of the biggest consumer electronics brands on the marketplace, the likes of Anchor, Spigen, probably two dozen more 
Chinese brands that are no longer on the marketplace um, <laughs> for, for reasons we won't get into. Um, but yeah, it was just, it, it was an intense role, uh, but I learned a ton and I got to ride sidecar with a lot of brands as they, they grew on the marketplace in kind of the, the mid 20 teens um, when the marketplace was really hockey sticking. Uh, so it was a great role. At the same time, I got a front row seat to seeing how much money third party sellers were making uh, and, and the opportunity for a third party seller on Amazon. And I said to myself, well, I can do this myself. So I left in 2019 uh, and, and really did two things. Number one was I started consulting for brands. Uh, the, the funny thing that happened on my way out the door was a lot of the brands that I had worked with while at Amazon said, John, we want to keep working with you. So I started kind of a, a boutique consultancy as a, a vehicle to continue working with them. And then number two is I started my, my first Amazon business. Um, and it's a business I still run to this day. Uh, I, I won't share too many of the details about it, but suffice it to say, I kind of lucked into it uh, because my partner in the business, old high school buddy, his family had been running a B2B business for the better part of 25 years at that point. Um, but they had no kind of D to C side of the business. So my offer was, let me start us up on Amazon and, and take a percentage of that business. Uh, so that's what I did. That was how I, I got started on selling on Amazon. So they already had existing products and you just basically took, started doing their marketplace stuff. That's exactly right. And, you know, I, I maybe went into it uh, a little arrogant thinking that seeing how the, the, the inner workings of the marketplace functioned with one another, how the sausage was made per se, uh, I, I was kind of maybe under the impression that that would give me a leg up. And the truth was, I had a lot of hard lessons in the beginning. You know, selling on Amazon is not easy, uh, really no matter what background you come from, and you have to earn your stripes. Um, so as much as my Amazon my background working there is interesting, and, and yes, I, I know s certain things about how the teams work with one another, how different systems are set up. Um, there's a hack that you shared at one point that uh, is something that I used to use with clients. Um, but it, it's really the selling and the consulting for brands once I got out of Amazon that really leveled up uh, what, what I've been able to do. Um, but fast forwarding a little bit, ended up joining an aggregator when that wave kind of really started to crest in 2020, uh, helped stand up that business. Uh, hired a ton of people, as it were, uh, and and oversaw the acquisition of a lot of brands, um, which again, kind of going back to my M and A background, I was well positioned to do. Uh, and then life happened. Wanted to have a family, have kids, take my foot off the gas a little, so did that, and just kind of leaned back into my Amazon agency, into my Amazon business for a little while. Uh, that was around early 2022 took a break, um, which I hadn't done in 16 years of, of professional working, right? And it was at that point where I kind of had a reset moment and, and looked inward and said, well, what do I want to do? And what I found was I really enjoyed continuing to, to run my Amazon business. I thought I maybe had a, an advantage in going out and acquiring Amazon businesses and growing them past the point that you know, I kind of inherited them from the existing owners or the previous owners. Um, and I continue to do consulting and advisory for brands. Uh, it, it's, it, it's all a little bit of a flywheel, maybe even an ecosystem of Amazon things that I love. Consulting, operating, going out and, and acquiring interesting businesses. Uh, and, and that's kind of where I am today. Um, you know, the only other thing that I'll add is like you, I've started a newsletter. Uh, and, and it's part of what I, I guess, enjoy doing on the content side. I, I like sharing. Uh, I like sharpening my own thinking and skills by writing. That's primarily how I do it. Uh, and the newsletter is my vehicle for that. And you do a really good job with that. I'd heard of you, but I didn't really know you. And just until like two months ago, I got on LinkedIn. I think it was in early August. I'd been ignoring LinkedIn. I was on Facebook and spending all my effort there. And I had a, a something on Instagram, but I think I've made one or two posts ever on Instagram. And nothing on Twitter. I was just a Facebook guy, always maxing out the 5,000 followers and having to delete people out. So someone else I wanted to follow me could come in and I'd go through there and look for the dead people or their, their icon is no longer there uh, or whatever, accounts closed and delete them. 
So, but and then I was like, you know what? I think I'm missing something here. And someone's telling me about LinkedIn. So I, I went over and said, let me get on LinkedIn. And you know what? I was missing the boat there. That's where the action is. And this Amazon space with everybody that's anybody uh, is is on LinkedIn. I know some big people in this space that still are not on LinkedIn. I'm like, you got to get over there because that's where people are sharing the good stuff. And I saw you on there and I was like, who is this guy? He's saying some really good stuff. There's a lot of garbage. You know, a lot of people just marketing themselves or putting out some BS. Um, and But you're actually writing well thought out, actionable, good stuff. I'm like, who is this guy? So uh, I started I started following you. And then then you came out with that thing where you said, here's my favorite 10 podcasts or something. And I'm like, and, and you put AMPM up there as one of your favorites. I'm like, all right, this guy's really cool. I got to get him on. And then you're like, I, I saw you post, I think you posted somewhere. It's like, I, I'm very selective in where I speak or what I do or where I go or, or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, let's see if he turns me down. Let's 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 yeah. let, me, let me see. Uh, but no, it was great. And so your newsletter, I signed up. If you're not, um, how? Do, what's the website for that? Man, I, I need to get a uh, proper domain. Um, it's called Best at Amazon, and I'll, I'll give you a little origin story there behind that. Uh, but the best way to find it is to look me up on LinkedIn, and it, it's linked right there under my my beautiful headshot. Um, and the spelling of the name, if you're listening to this, is J O N, so no no H, and then Dirk, right. it's D E R K I T S. So yes. if you're listening to this, uh, you're not uh, online. Uh, it's that's that's how you look him up on on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, your newsletter is really good. Well, you put it out once a week, right? Once a week, and I go deep on a single topic. Uh, that's kind of the the model that I've I've kind of refined over time. That's the voice that I wanted to have. I, I wanted to be known for deep dives for the one percent. Uh, of Amazon sellers, the top one percent of Amazon sellers, and uh, you know, in in some ways, I, I I obviously monitor the newsletters in the space, and uh, billion dollar sellers is probably my favorite behind mine. Um, <laughs> That's all right. Uh, but you know, people have asked me about that, and I I think about my newsletter, your newsletter, as as totally complimentary, um, because you know. To, to give a, a really maybe silly analogy. Uh, I'm the USA Today and you're the Wall Street Journal. Well. <laughs> or, or, or you're going deep and I'm going shorter nuggets and, uh, and that's. Here, here, here's the analogy I came up with oh, after right. having dinner last weekend uh, with, with with my wife and a few others. We were at a Brazilian steakhouse. Uh-huh. Uh, Fogo de Chao. Yep. And you go to a Brazilian steakhouse, for anyone that's ever, that hasn't been there, you know, they have a great buffet. Uh, mm -hmm. they have, you know, all sorts of fruits, vegetables. It's, it's very quality food, but at the same time, you go to a Brazilian steakhouse for the meat. And most people, if, again, if you haven't been there, uh, Brazilian steakhouses are notorious for maybe over serving you. They have a little red light, green light, uh, system where you, you basically will get food until you tell them to stop. Um, and, and I think about our two newsletters kind of in that same context I'm the guy who goes to the Brazilian steakhouse and I find one piece of meat and the, the bacon wrapped steak. And I say, keep bringing it, keep bringing it, keep bringing it. <laughs> and I, I think your newsletter is the one for the people that love to, to sample the buffet, love to sample all the meats. They're all get They're getting great food all around, but they like to kind of fill up with, you know, the panoply of, of food there. And I'm just the, the weirdo that <laughs> eats a bunch of bacon wrapped steak. Um, and that's great. Cause you know, everyone in that scenario leaves the steakhouse very satisfied uh, and, you know, maybe a little unhealthier than when they walked in, but still. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a good analogy. I, I like that actually. Um, yeah. I, I don't do heavy, deep dives like you do, which, um, but I save those more for like the billion dollar seller summit or something like that where, so those are, I, I do have those in my, my arsenal, I guess you would say, but I, I don't put those in news. It's more, uh, one of the things that I'm I've become just by default, I guess, uh, kind of famous for are hacks. And you know, in this business, hacks are awesome. You but you need to fo focus on the fundamentals. The fundamentals is what matters, and it's not the the quick hacks. But sometimes there's cool tools or something that can solve a problem for you or something that people and people love that. So I started doing those like as I think I started at ASGTG like four or five years ago um, and did it, and people just went nuts. And so now that's Basically, when I speak publicly, everybody wants me to do those. And so that's, they, they love those little short little things. And so that's, 
that's what I, I'm known for. And so that I, I kind of take the news. It goes a little bit beyond a, a little hack, but that's what I'm trying to do. But I think a lot of people have, when we're sitting here saying newsletters and there's a lot of people will probably rolling their eyes. Uh, they're listening to this like, dude, I get so many emails and so many newsletters from every service provider in this space and everybody. New, I think newsletter, those are not newsletters um, to, to me. I mean, maybe we should change the name to magazines or or something else so to dis, to, to delineate the misperception because most of those newsletters uh, are just promotional emails you know and some people are trying to it's email marketing and it's just here's our latest software tool here's the latest this or that or they're really basic you know they maybe they're blog posts and here's how to set up an asin on amazon or something um they're not they're not in my mind they're not newsletters they're they're promotional emails and i think we're doing it different and there's a couple other people trying uh, out there now that, that are doing stuff, but it's difficult. I mean, putting out a, a newsletter is, is difficult. I mean, to write that, to come up with the content, to curate it, to edit it, it's not easy. And, and I know we were talking before we started, I was saying that there's this newsletter space is hot right now. I mean, outside of forget Amazon in internet marketing world, this is super hot. It's become, it's gotten hot. It started with, uh, probably with my first million podcast, Sam Parr, talking about how he sold The Hustle uh, for $27 million bucks, how they sold Milk Road uh, for ten, uh, eight, uh, over $10 million, around $10 million bucks in eight months, um, how, which was a crypto newsletter. Others have sold for $75 million. Milk uh, Morning Brew, uh, another one sold for five twenty five. So a lot of people start paying up, and there's a whole sub-industry out there of newsletters now and software tools. And, and now with AI, a lot of people are like, oh, shoot, we don't have to have journalists anymore or writers. We can just have AI do all this and automate it. So a lot of people are getting into that. And, and my opinion is that's going to fail massively for most people. A few of them will rise, but you're going to start getting inundated with junk. And, but I think there's a major opportunity here for product sellers, whether it's Amazon, Walmart, Shopify, TikTok, whatever, to actually combine the journalism aspect and the power of a newsletter with product selling. And the problem is that all the Milk Road and all the, the ones that have sold, they're very good on the journalism side, selling sponsorships and, and getting some eyeballs in there and retaining people. But they don't know squat about how to leverage that into brands and products. But we do. And I think if you mix those two, you have a, a one-two punch that's unstoppable. Uh, and, and, and so that's what I'm doing. Uh, the, the billion dollars sellers one is I started initially because I already have an audience. And I'm like, let me figure out what works. What are the best tools? How, how much work is this really to do it? And how can we automate some of this? And what's it take? And then we're expanding that into my brands. So I have a dog brand. And so it's sustainable dog products. And it's what we sell. We do life jackets for like body glove. And we, we have poop bags. And we have some other stuff. And we're like, how can we build an audience for this? And at one point, we're like, you know, the traditional methods go out to Facebook, do all that. But you don't own that audience. On an email newsletter, you own the audience. You're building trust. You're building rapport. You're building a brand, it's the personality, the way it's written and everything. And if you do that right, you can leverage that into product sales to launch a product immediately to the top uh, on Amazon or Walmart or anywhere. Or, uh, there, there's a lot of power. There's a lot of cool things you can do with AI to customize that. Um, not, not have it written, but even customize so everybody has a different newsletter. It's basically a news feed in an email. And a lot of people say, well, email is dead, Kevin. This is, you know, nobody over under 40 reads email and it's bullshit. Um, email is still the most powerful mechanism if it's an email that they want to read. And the emails, newsletters done right are the new magazines. They're the new Cosmo. They're the new Newsweek. They're the new, and there's a massive opportunity right now, I believe, done right. 95% are going to fail, but done right. And so that's why I was just at FHL, Funnel Hacking Live, a couple of weeks ago, and Russell Brunson, now he had 5,000 people in the room. He got, has this new ClickFunnels 2.0, which is a marketing system for internet marketers. And the fundamental thing, it's called the linchpin, his fundamental thing is first step, start a newsletter to build an audience. Quit relying on Facebook and everybody else, social media. Use those to drive traffic, uh, but you need to own those people, which is, I've been saying for decades. Um, and and the, uh, you're going to see a lot of stuff come out. So I'm doing a... a a webinar actually on December 1st to actually show people in this space how to actually do webinars right. Here's the tools. I'm not, not how to do webinars, how to do newsletters right. Here's the tools. Here's everything you need to know. Here's what nobody's telling you. It's kind of like the guys are selling courses on Amazon. They show you, look at my screenshot of a million bucks in sales, but they don't tell you that 90% of that was uh, search, find, buy giveaways 
or they don't tell you, you know, that, that here's my twenty dollar product. I source it on Alibaba for for five bucks. I've got a seventy five percent profit margin. They don't tell you about all the shipping and fulfillment fees and the storage fees and advertising. That's what everybody's leaving out, making this sound glamorous and like amazing. And it can be, but you got to do it right. So that's what I'm going to be showing in this webinar. So, and I think you understand that um, because you're in in the weeds doing this now. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I think we're both motivated in a way of by doing it right and, and showing people that path. Uh, I, I I forget the name. There's a kind of eponymous law about <laughs> along the lines of if if you want to. Uh, if you want to spot in inact or you want to get a right answer on the internet, uh, post the wrong answer, and then you'll have fifty people correct. <laughs> That's a good but, one. I like that. But, but it, yeah. like I, I understand that as a, at a deep level because to your point, you know, you you see someone, you know, a guru posting a screenshot, or um, you know, someone kind of promoting AI as the the unlock for scaling out a newsletter, and I look at that and I say, well you know, you're, you're omitting key facts, but also it's not that easy. And I think the, the right way is often the hard way. Uh, but you don't have a lot of people that are predisposed toward doing things the hard way, um, and, and taking the time to build, but that's ultimately what creates enterprise value. Um, it is, but, uh, I, I want to go back to what you said about newsletters and, and creating an audience for product brands and that being the opportunity. So. I, I mentioned briefly that one of the things I do now is I, I buy and build Amazon businesses. I'm generally looking at micro acquisitions, sub $1 million. Um, and a lot of this is informed by my experience at an aggregator, understanding you know, how to go source businesses, how to uh, you know, construct a deal that's, that's balanced and favorable to both parties, um, and then how to integrate the business and grow it. Uh, but... You know, I've, I've acquired a few businesses with a partner so far, and in the beginning, they were pure product businesses, ones that were just under-optimized, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, call it low-hanging fruit. I hate that phrase, but the reality was they were missing A-plus content, they weren't running ads, you know, they didn't even have five images or video on the, the PDPs. Uh, so just easy easy, easy fixes with someone that knows the basics of what to do, right? Exactly. Yeah. So those were, were attractive candidates as I was kind of getting my sea legs under me uh, in the acquisition world <laughs> when I'm playing with my own money and not other people's money. Um, but as I've kind of refined my, my, my acquisition criteria, as I built my, my pattern recognition muscles, one of the things that I've discovered is that there's better businesses out there uh, in the Amazon space, and they tend to be the ones that have both kind of product and audience built in. So I'll give you an example. Uh, this is a, a real deal I'm looking at, and I'll kind of morph the, adjust the details a little bit so as to not give anything away. Um, but there's a, a $300,000 business out there. It's cash flowing about 9K a month. Um, but it's for sale for 300000 or it's 300000 top line? Uh, for sale for 300000 Okay, just, okay. just under. Um, cash flowing, I, I think about nine K a month. Uh, but over half of that is from display advertising. So the business is a website related to kind of the lifestyle of, of the products. The, the brand is a, the product brand is a personal care brand. Uh, so there's a, a website, um, that has a lot of content around kind of the, the personal care, care products within the brand. And the business itself has display advertising revenue and then sells products on Amazon. Uh, and it also has an email list that isn't being used at all. So yeah. I'm looking at this business and thinking, well, number one, continue to invest in content on the website uh, to ensure that the display ad dollars continue to flow because it's very high margin, as you can imagine. But uh, this email list, which I think was about 12,000 strong, let's start to nurture it. Let, let's start to, to seed them with information and promotions and drive some of that traffic over to Amazon. Um, and then there's some other things on the product side that I would, I would do, but this is a $300,000 $300, business um, you know, that, that's cash flowing close to 100K a, a year. Uh, it, it's, it's a great business, um, but it had, if it was purely a product brand, I wouldn't be interested at all. 
because it's it's kind of a me too product in you know a, a very saturated category um, with relatively low ASP. There's a lot of things that make the product unattractive, but what makes the business overall attractive is the website with display ads, the large email list that I feel like I can capitalize on and grow. Um, and I think that's that's something for Amazon owners to think about deeply if they have a plan to exit in the next 12, 24 months. How can you grow? I mean, that, that's an important point. Important point too on that email list. You said some people may say, "Well, John, twelve thousand—that's not very big. Twelve thousand is awesome if it's a good list. It's not about how big the list is." I hear people say, "I got a hundred thousand people on my list, or I got two hundred thousand on my list. I have on my personal list over a hundred thousand Amazon sellers. That's on my list. But I know a lot of them either quit selling, they're junk, they're they're." not they don't like me or what whatever it may be um so i don't just blast this out you know there's other people in our space that you know a couple we, we talked about before i don't want to name them here but that have a big list and they just send out what they call a newsletter to their entire list they just blast it out every every week and that's foolish that's absolutely foolish um in, in my opinion <laughs> do that occasionally for a marketing promotion or to get them onto a you want to do that to get them onto a good list and so I have my list of 100,000. I will send them out a list, an email saying, hey, I got a new newsletter. Uh, uh, it's on a totally different domain, totally different IP, totally different everything, so that I don't get start getting blocked in spam or start getting bad reputations in email. There's a whole science to that most people don't understand in this business, a whole science to that. Uh, and then I have my newsletter, which right now uh, is a little over 5,000 people. But they're all double opted in, which means you sign up and then you got to hit another email to confirm to get actually get activated. So it's a two step process and you go through a captcha and you go through answering. So it, that's a highly qualified list. And those 5,000, most a lot of them came from my 100,000. But there's 95,000 that 100,000 that either don't care. Maybe they're not getting the email. They haven't they don't even know about it. They're just not paying attention. But these are the 5,000 that are paying attention that I'm getting 60% open rates, close to 20% click rates on e every newsletter consistently. N no, My worst performing newsletter right now is 52% open rate. Worst performing. Um, and so, and that's with Apple, a lot of the open rates don't track now. A lot of people don't realize this with Apple. Apple has a new privacy. It's, it's really cooked into OS 17, the new OS, but a lot of people haven't upgraded that yet, but it's partially cooked into their past two, where a lot of open rates don't show up. So that open rates probably higher. And the, one of the reasons I absolutely know this is I sent out, I had about a thousand people that had not opened the email and the last eight mail, emails I sent them. And I'm like, I sent them a message saying, Hey, I'm sorry, but I'm taking you off the list. I'm unsubscribing you from my newsletter. Uh, and unless you go and click something, go, go open one of the emails or go click it. And I got hundreds of people emailing me back saying, Kevin, I've opened every single one of them. Please don't take me off the list. Please don't take me off the list. I've opened every single one of them. A lot of them are Apple users, some of them are Microsoft users. It's because the opens are not tracking. And opens as a metric are becoming, it, there's a hot topic. There's a webinar some email marketers just did uh, last week from Validity talking about how opens are not going to be a good metric to track your success anymore because of all these changes going on and UTM changes with Apple. Uh, but my point of that is those 5,000 people, if I knock 1,000 of them off because they never open it, I'll do it. Those 4,000 with that open rate, they're super passionate. They're 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 your loyal fans. They're your raving fans. When I, if I go to sell them something, if I say, "Hey, we got the new billion dollar seller summit coming out," or whatever, they're going to pay attention. Or if I'm a product brand and I'm I'm a dog, I'm selling dog products. And I have a newsletter for dog lovers. This no, newsletter is not, "Hey, our dog company is great. We just announced a new dog bowl, and uh, Charlie's our new mascot, and and whatever." This is a, a newsletter all about dogs. You know, dog training tips, dog, uh, some dog that's a fire rescue dog and his story or, or uh, and we customize it with you're into poodles. you every single newsletter you get has a poodle story. We, we know that we, we can see there's all things you can do with AI and some some software out there where you can basically make it a feed. So it's custom to them. We can have them upload a picture of their dog and I can actually use AI to, with um, some tools that we're doing. Um actually create a take the, your dog's picture and put it into a background so if today is the first day of fall here's fido in a picture with the, the fall leaves on the ground behind him and it's in your newsletter with fido and you're like oh that's really cute that's really cool there's a share button there hit share they share it on social media look at fido you know this is so cool and people are like where'd you get that oh this newsletter creates this flywheel 
and then or they can there's another button that says print on demand take some over to merch on amazon or one of the other uh tools get it on a t-shirt or coffee mug or whatever and it's sitting on your desk it's branding and then when i come out with like hey are we now we're, we're launching a new sustainable uh anxiety jacket uh for dogs uh, what should we do? What would you like in it? And they participate almost like our own little pick foo. Uh, and they're, they're making suggestions and they, they feel part of it. And then we say when it's launched on Amazon, Hey, this is launched on Amazon. Um, go and, and, and get it. We're giving everybody 20% off. Or, or if you buy it, we're going to give you a free gift, send us your receipt and we'll send you a free bonus gift from the newsletter or, or whatever, a free co- whatever it may be, a free dog chain or collar or something. And instantly you're launched with legitimate sales. The legitimate people are passionate, most likely leave good reviews because they, they got into it. And it starts this flywheel. Other people buy it on Amazon that just randomly found it. And then there's an insert in there. Hey, join the newsletter. Get a free gift when you join the newsletter. Not go to some stupid warranty or, or whatever, but get something of value. Uh, and I'll send that out to them. Uh, it might cost me five bucks, ten bucks to send that out to them. But I know... I mean, the average right now for a, a valid, a good newsletter subscriber, if you talk to the big media companies, is about 30 bucks. So someone like if you look at Milk Road or Morning Brew or Daily Hustle, th- these vary. But the actual value just on the advertising side, just on selling sponsorships and ads in the newsletter, and maybe some affiliate link stuff, is is 30 bucks. on a- the me- That's the average in this industry. Um, <clears throat> if I don't know what it is yet on and Amazon, but it has to be more than that because I can sell ads in that newsletter to, to Purina. If I got a decent newsletter with good open rates and they'll want to, I can sell support that. And then I make even crazier money off the product side and creating this whole ecosystem and it gets people into it. And then we were hoping to tie, it's kind of crashed now, but I think we're still going to be able to do it, NFTs into it. So we we're going to tie, not NFT JPEGs where you, you're you trying to get rich by buying a bunch of pictures of apes or something, but you're you're... We're using the technology, so we'd have a digital element to the newsletter. Which, like, here's Fido, your dog uploaded his picture. We created an NFT out of his picture, and then there's almost like this little metaverse. Um, and when you buy the product on Amazon, there's an NFT, not in, I'm sorry, NFC, not NFT, but NFC co- uh, tag in on the product box. You scan that. That's proof of purchase on your phone. That automatically triggers an accessory in the in, in the blockchain to go to Fido and he gets a cool, um, you know, gold, uh, collar or whatever it may be. And you can display that and stuff. So we're doing this whole gamification. Not everybody will participate in that, but enough of them will. And those people are going to be rabid about it by everything that you do. It's, look at what Taylor Swift's doing. I mean, look at the, I was looking at Taylor Swift back in the, and like I was seeing stuff of hers in August and I'm sorry, April and May on TikTok and what people are doing. I was like, holy sh- shit. This is freaking brilliantly amazing, the passion that she's created from these pans. And I was like, this, is, this needs to be textbook Harvard freaking MBA case study. This needs to be, everybody needs to reverse engineer, which, like her or hate her, uh, reverse engineer what's happening. It may be, some of that thing is calculated, some of it may be by chance, but look what's just happening just recently with all, her showing up at games. Uh, I don't know if you're a football fan or not, but yeah. showing up and, you know, th- all the stuff that's online now where all these memes of uh, she put uh, Kelsey on the map. You know, he was a famous football player already, but it's just that branding. She's got a movie coming out in theaters in two weeks uh, of her tour, shot her tour. It's, it, it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant to a T marketing uh, by whoever's behind this. And that's what you can do if you do this whole product stuff right. And nobody is willing to put that time in. They're just looking for the latest hack, the latest trick. How can I get rich quick? That's what the guru told me. I can quit my job and uh, sell, sell my business for five million bucks in three years. Uh, you know, some people have done that. They've been right place, right time. Yeah. But that's not the way to do it. And like you said, buying a brand, which one do you want to buy? You want to buy an Amazon brand that's a product that may be dead in two years um, <clears throat> and has a life cycle? Or do you want to buy something that if that product dies, no problem. We got a massive audience behind it that's raving that'll buy whatever we yeah. do. I, I mean, uh, it, I think it's a clear answer. And I, I almost am kicking myself now for using the term audience because it's really about building a tribe it is uh, everything it's that commu- you it's, commu- is- it's communities some people call it movements some of the marketers say now uh, you know are saying don't don't build an audience build a movement that's the that's the big catch word that's kind of like a tribe um but build build a movement uh and then people are passionate about it and, and if you can do that and that's what i think a lot of people now on this we know the e-commerce side a lot of people listening to this are good e-commerce sellers you know that side now 
that's one of the reasons I like going to Funnel Hacking Live and some of these other outside. I go to Driven Con Masterminds, a few others outside this Amazon space is because there's brilliant people that are doing other things in the same e-commerce or marketing world that you can take pieces of what they do and combine it with what we do. And you can put everything that we do on steroids instead of just focusing on going to one Amazon conference after another. You've got to, and that's what I'm kind of trying to do in the newsletter a little bit. You'll see it's not all about Amazon. There's stuff about TikTok and there's stuff about psychology. Of do you put a person in the picture in your product photo or not? And I'm, I'm trying to mix some of that in um, to, to, to actually show people, look, you need to be well-rounded if you really want to do this right. I, I preach that. And I think one of the, the patterns I've seen among successful Amazon sellers is they come from different realms, from, from different sectors, and they're really good at synthesis, idea, cross-pollination. It's about taking little kernels from different places and saying, oh, I can apply that here, or I can take you know, this piece of psychological marketing and apply it to my Amazon business. Uh, it's, it's, it's so cool to see it happen, but I love that you actively venture out into those realms. I tried to do the same thing. Um, cause it, it's so easy to get caught up and, you know, find a nice home in your own little echo chamber. Um, but you know, I, I think you hit on a really cool, uh, topic as it relates to, to tribes and communities. And a natural question is how do I know when I built that? Uh, and I, I saw, this is very recent. Um, I don't know if you follow, you were talking about LinkedIn before. I don't know if you follow Brian Porter. Um, he's one of the co-founders of Simple Modern. Um, great person to follow on Twitter uh, or LinkedIn. Um, both him and Mike Beckham, the other founder, post a lot. Uh, but Brian posted a video, a, a user-generated video from TikTok of a Simple Modern fan creating this real viral, at least I think it was viral, um, but she was literally railing against all these people that pronounced the brand wrong. Because the Simple Modern logo is just a, an SM. Uh, but you could look at it and read it as slim just because of the, the font and the typography. And so uh, in, a, in a kind of joking way, this girl is railing against all these people that are calling it slim and saying, no, it's SM, it's Simple Modern. And I think, you know, if if I had to draw a line as to when your brand has created a tribe. It's when you have people on TikTok organically uh, <laughs> advocating, evangelizing for your brand. And the, the cool thing is though, you know, when that happens organically is different in every brand's journey, but I think you can compress time and accelerate that by putting your product in front of a lot of influencers, in front of a lot of customers and encouraging them to share their own experiences with it. To, to, to instill in them a sense of ownership of the brand. Because that's ultimately what, what tribalism is. You feel like you have a piece of the community, a piece of the tribe. Um, and I, I'm, I'm working very hard to do that with my brands. I'm trying to put my product in front of as many TikTok micro-influencers as possible. I have uh, a baby brand, and I think I sent out a case of 30 units to 30 different influencers last week. And I'm waiting for the, the videos on TikTok to get posted. But um, you know, it, it all comes back to what you said. There's, <laughs> you, you can have an audience, you can have a tribe, you can have a community uh, of 100,000, or you can have one of 5,000 who are just rabid and passionate and fervent. Um, and There's I a that. saying that you need a thousand, ra a thousand raving fans and you yeah. can make millions of dollars. That's all I it takes. A thousand, you need a thousand raving fans and you're set. Yep. You're, you, you're set, you're set for life. If, if you, if you have a thousand raving fans, Taylor Swift has a lot more than that. Uh, she, she's, she's, she's set for life. But one of the things that I look at too, I mean, there, there's a couple of things that you touched on there is like in my newsletter. So one of my deliberate goals in the beginning is like, I'm not going to be another corporate newsletter. I'm not just going to summarize news. I'm going to add humor to it. I'm going to be, I'm going to cuss if I need to cuss. I'm going to say, this is bullshit. I'm going to call some people out. You know, one of my headlines, one of my subject lines was naked girl on balcony. You know, people get in that subject line. They're like, what the heck is this? A lot of people would never do that. They would like yeah. not open that up. They're like, what is this? Some smut or what, you know, what the hell, how, what do you, how dare you send that to my email? Those. And I had like three people out of thousands that got that particular one about a month ago say, unsubscribe me. Uh, they messaged me. I had like 12 people total out of 
four or five thousand, whatever that number I had at that point was, uh, subscribe, uh, subscribers, unsubscribe off of that one email. Twelve, twelve people. Nobody reported a spam, but three people email me back and say, "Take me off of this list immediately. I don't want this garbage in my my house." I'm like, "Yes!" I was so fired up when that came in. I'm like, "Yes, get the." F out of here. Um, I don't want you. Um, you're not my tribe. You're not my community. But then I had 30, 40, 50 people reply back saying, I can't believe you did, did that, but that's freaking awesome. I can't wait to see what you're going to say next, what's going to be in the next one. Uh, and that's, that's part of, that's very, very deliberate. My stories are true. I've done a lot of stories. I mean, they're not, I mean, I, I've got 82 of them that are in the hopper. Uh, and they're not all written, but that's, you know, that what I can write about and new ones come up like the naked girl on the balcony just happened. Um, but that, that is part of it. And I try to tie that in to a lesson around selling or on, on whatever I'm talking about that week. I try to somehow tie that in. So it's not just some random story and it's straight into the point. It's not long and rambling. You know, there's people out there right now putting blog posts out and social media stuff. It's they're telling their stories. And I, I, that's, that's an important thing to do as a brand or as a, if you're listening to this and you're a brand, you need to tell your story. Or if you're uh, an individual influencer or uh, uh, you're teaching people or consulting people, you need to get your story out there and, and be authentic with that story. And here's the problem. And this was just, there was a really good speaker. I'm looking for her name right now on my phone that just spoke at uh, Funnel Hack, her McCall Jones, M-C-C-A-L-L -L Jones. Uh, I want this girl speaking at my Level Up event in Hawaii because um, <clears throat> after BDSS, we're doing a Level Up event, which is next level stuff. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I want her speaking at it, but hopefully I can get her. <clears throat> she came on and said, look, there's something called the attractive character. And this is goes for, you can apply this to a person, whether you're a consultant or, or you're a brand, you need to find your attractive character. And she said, there's 54 types of attractive characters and there's three fundamental buckets those 50 uh, of characteristics that make up those 54 character uh, characters. And she went through them. I'm, I'm looking here on my phone. Um, she says too many people are two faced. They, they get it wrong. They look at like Gary V and they're like, look how Gary V is doing this. I want to be like Gary V or they look at, look how Nike is doing this. Let's be like Nike. If they're a brand and like, you're missing it. You got to be authentic to yourself and you got to know which of these, how, where you fall into these categories. And she gave, so she gave about 50 examples of celebrities. She's like, look, this is The Rock. He's these three. This is this guy. He's these three. This is um, Jennifer Lopez. She's these three. If you're trying to mimic as a brand or as a person the wrong one, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. like, it's not going to resonate. But if you know, you dial in, this is the, of these three categories. These are the, the one characteristic of each of the three categories that I am. And you double down on that, you're going to blow it out of the water um, from a brand point of a personal brand or a physical products brand point of view. And it was an excellent talk. And I, I think it went over some people's heads. Um, that were in that audience. But if you, those kinds of things, you're going back to what you're talking about, when you know you've made it or how to make it, those are important things. And you're not going to hear that from some Amazon guru, uh, you know, trying to tell you the latest hack or how he made 20 million bucks on Amazon um, or something. I mean, you hit it on the head, Kevin. Uh, authenticity is so key, especially as you're trying, you know, whether you're talking about a product brand or a personal brand, you know, you, you can exaggerate certain characteristics of yourself or of your product. Um, you can invoke hyperbole. Uh, but at some level, the only thing that is sustainable over the long term, whether it's for a person or a product, is if, if it's rooted in truth and, and authenticity. And uh, I, I think a lot of people forget that. They they try to become someone that they aren't because they see something trending in, in a, a tangent space. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a, a, that that goes for products or Amazon sellers too, or yeah, individual yeah. people trying to be a celebrity or an influencer or whatever. It goes that, both ways. That's exactly right, and it's the best brands that that have a, a a firm grasp of who they are, kind of a and and a deep sense of that 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 identity and purpose. Um, they do the best marketing, right? Like Liquid Death is a great example. Uh, mm -hmm. They they know who they are, and of course they've positioned themselves as kind of the anti-villain or, or maybe the villain, depending on uh, how you would look at it, against regular water. Uh, and, and they do some great us versus them creative. Um, but they, they know who they are. And that, that comes out deeply in everything they do. Same thing with a, a, a local Chicago brand like Dude Wipes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and even <laughs> that deep sense of identity 
goes all the way up to the founder, Sean Riley, who doesn't call himself the chief executive officer. Uh, he's the chief dude. So it's, uh, it, I think it's really special when you've found that as a, as, a, as a person, as an influencer, as a product brand. Um, but it's hard. And, and so many people rush through that phase of, of understanding, like, what is my North Star? Who am I? Uh, and what is my authentic voice? I mean, we did it for our, our dog brand. We sat down and one of the, I'm, I'm partners with two other guys in that. And uh, one of the guys, he, I forget what the name of it, some brand development thing he found. And we went through a process for like three weeks of like mapping out all these little categories of like, what do we stand for? What's this? And ask these really interesting questions. And you'd answer those like, what do we feel about this? Or how do we want to be portrayed as this? And then you put them all together. And it really funnels it down to like, this is who you are and this is what you're trying to be. And then you create all your messaging and everything around that. And that, that it, was a, it was a brilliant exercise. I mean, it was a kind of a pain to go through that. And most people don't want to sit through and go through that or think that creative process. But if you do that, it, you know, that's not making money to pay your rent next, next week, like a lot of people are trying to do or to quit their job. Um, so that's not attractive uh, to a lot of people. Um, they're looking for the quick fix. But if you want to do something that... You're not going to sell to some Amazon aggregator that you're going to sell to Procter and Gamble, or you sell to a big. Look at Native Deodorant. Sold that for a hundred million bucks. It created a real brand off of that, um, and that that's where I think everybody needs to be trying to focus. You might got to do. You might need to do a few things in the beginning just to hustle and, and you know keep some keep a roof over your head. And but if you you need to be trying to to make that switch at some point, or just do it from the beginning to where you're building. A raving, a, a group of raving fans, and a true brand. Uh, and you, and Amazon is a great place to start. It's, 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 there is no place better in the world just than to start on Amazon. But that's a that's a marketplace, a, a shopping cart of choice. And so that's just one. So you need to expand off of that at the TikTok shop, which I think is going to blow up, and and um, you know, Wal uh, Walmart, uh, I think is going to blow up. And you need to be willing to adapt. You know, I remember when the panic, the the um, COVID happened. Everybody's using this app called Clubhouse. I don't know if you were on Clubhouse or not, but everybody was using this app called Clubhouse and just hanging out on there. And it got really popular. Now it's basically, I don't know anybody that goes on there anymore. A few people, but um, <clears throat> I haven't been on a couple. I think I even deleted it off my phone. Um, but everybody was going on there, building massive audiences and 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 talking. And that that's, <clears throat> I remember the, the aggregators at the time, that was a hot time, you know, Thrasio and uh, Casey Goss was on there with the guys from Thrasio and Casey's a brilliant guy, but, um, the guys from Thrasio or I, I got on one of their things and I was like, you guys aren't going to be around in a couple of years. And they're like, there's not enough businesses to buy. They're decent. Number one, like, oh yeah, there's plenty to buy that. Like, no, there's not. Uh, you might you wait till you get into operating these that look good. They're not good. And I got in arguments with these guys. Like you're going to be, most of you are going to be gone. There's going to be like five of you left. And they just like, no, you don't know what you're talking about, Kevin. It's like, I think I know a lot more than you. I don't have $3 billion, but I, I know a lot more than you. Um, and we'll look what's happened. The same thing I believe is going about to happen with Amazon search. And I don't know if you just saw this. It's going to be in my newsletter. Well, it's, this is coming out after, but it's in one of my the newsletter from last week on Thursday. Um, and actually, Joe, from uh, she does a newsletter called, uh, what's the name of it? It's AI for Amazon sellers or AI for e-com sellers. It's, it's, she just started. She came to my Billion Dollar Seller Summit, saw me talk about newsletters, said, I'm going to start my own newsletter. How could, what niche can I do? And she's doing AI for e-commerce sellers or something like that. And she just broke the story today in hers. If you, if you haven't, Joe, I, f I have to look up her last name. She's also going to be a guest on the AMPM podcast in, a, in a, about a month or so. Uh, but it's called Nile, Amazon Nile. You can look it up. Um, Project Nile. Yeah. Um, and it just it came, it started from some sort of leaked documents from Microsoft or somewhere. Uh, um, and it, it basically is saying how Amazon's going to radically change search on. And I, I've been saying this since last, late last year when AI came out. So that all these tools, they're going to go the way of the dinosaurs if they don't adapt. I mean, they're, they're, they're keyword tools. I mean, they have other tools, but the, the, the functionality of finding, you know, Finding these individual little keywords that other people are missing and capitalizing them, that's going to be history pretty soon. But now with this Nile, what they're saying they're going to do, it's basically some of my predictions are basically what they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to change everything. And so that's one of the, how do you see from you going from Amazon to 
having your own brand to working with aggregators and now consulting in, what do you see as the biggest thing that's changing and what's hard for sellers to get their heads around like to 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 actually make this thing work? The Project Nile news is is quite fresh. And I think Business Insider just leaked a story on it as well. Um, one of the things that you have to confront when you're working at Amazon or any tech company for that matter is uh, what I'll call coastal bias, um, right? All, all these very cool, innovative features or tech, they're developed kind of in these weird worlds of Silicon Valley, of Seattle, or, you know, maybe they're, they're done over in New York. Um, but for the most part, they're, they're built kind of in a vacuum. And as hard as you might try to get user or customer input uh, on these features in advance, it's hard to kind of get out of your bubble and really understand how something is going to travel through the rest of the country. And I say that because ChatGPT, I think, has been top of mind for people like you and me and the Amazon seller community for the better part of a year now, you know, since, since call it October, November, when, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was first launched. But there's a lot of people in the country who don't use it, let alone know what it is. And, and it's meaningless to their everyday life. And I say that as context to my main thought here around Project Nile, which is, Project Nile, for it to be successful, needs to almost be a, a seamless alteration of the search experience for customers. A, a, a very, um, you know, in, in customer friendly and intuitive search experience that is almost indistinguishable from the way it is today. I don't think the average Amazon customer, who you and I both know, they don't know that they're buying from 3P sellers most of the 60% yeah. of the time, right? Um, the average customer is going to need to continue to search using their previous search behavior. And that's the engineering challenge for Amazon as they build AI and, and kind of semantic search into uh, the, the back end, if you will. Um, so I, I think about that on the customer side a lot. You know, how can you launch something like this that's so revolutionary and make the everyday customer in small town Ohio you know, still want to shop on Amazon, still like the experience, in fact, love the experience even more than before. Now, on the seller side, the truth is, I don't know when it's going to impact us, how it's going to impact us. I probably fall in your camp that uh, the impact is going to come swifter and harder than, than you know, the people that are in the keyword camp think i think it's going to be as, as as brutal as when google updated their algorithm to, from penguin to warris or whatever the hell it was and like all these affiliate guys overnight were out of business all these seo guys and affiliate people were overnight out of business i think that level of something i and like you say i don't know what it is or how it's going to work and there's some things to be worked out i think they'll figure it out though yeah and i think it's coming that and that's the beauty of the amazon seller community uh, I, I, I said at the top of this podcast, you know, I, I took a lot of licks early on and I, I thought I was super smart coming out of Amazon, having seen the, the back end, uh, but you got to get punched in the face a ton. And I think the Amazon seller community, if nothing else, is, is like Rocky Balboa, uh, takes a lot of punches, but adapts quickly and comes out on top. Uh, and I think that'll be the way it works when Project Nile uh, kind of manifests itself because a lot of the bigger sellers right now. I mean, unless you're a pre-existing brand coming on Amazon and people already know you, if you're a no not a no-name brand and you're coming on, you know, Chinese sellers or a lot of American Western sellers, you're having to game the system in a way. I'm not saying cheat. I'm not saying cheat. I'm not saying do black hat. I'm but you're having to game the system with figuring out which keywords are people are missing or who doesn't have a plus and who does and who whatever it, it's a it, it's you you know how what the algorithm looks like and what makes better conversions and you're you're fixing holes where other people are missing opportunities yep. ai i think is going to completely change that and it's going to reverse that where yeah. amazon's going to know based on your past history they have a massive database of what you bought i mean i can go back to night the 19 whatever 1999 or 1998 when i first bought something on amazon maybe 95 whatever it was, they know everything I've bought. 
they know everything I've done, everything I've looked at. Every you could you can request these reports yeah. from Amazon, by the way, and it's like a dossier of like hundred something pages of everything you've ever done. They know that, and they're going to be able to somehow figure out how the AI is going to show you instead of me looking at. I'm typing in uh, umbrellas, um, or, or yeah, maybe that's not a good example. But yeah, whatever umbrellas. Instead of me show, showing me the uh, the people that I type in some long tail keyword umbrellas for uh for, for the beach or something crazy long tail keyword people have gamed the system to make sure they rank for that mm -hmm. amazon's no longer not going to be able to do that they're going to know these are the beach these are the ones that the people that have gone to the beach before because they also bought books on going to uh but the bahamas and to San, uh, panama city beach and whatever and they, they also bought umbrella they're going to know all this stuff and you're just going to have to be able to do be good at branding that's why I'm creating these audiences and everything. You have to be good at branding and good at the whole experience and good at creating actually decent products that people yeah. want uh, instead of gaming the system. And I think that's going to be a big shift that's coming um, for, for a lot of people. And, and a lot of people are going to have trouble with this. I, I think so, too. Um, but the, the fact remains that... <laughs> And this is one of the things I try to lean on, knowing how dynamic and challenging Amazon is. Like, what are the durable truths? You talked before about mastering the basics. You know, you're known for hacks, but you always counsel sellers to master the basics first. And for me, I, I kind of do the same thing. I talk about retail math, traffic, conversion, times order value, right? But what, what, are, what are the basics of building an enduring, valuable enterprise? And I think it's a high-quality product, a, a raving tribe, and then really just meeting your customers where they are. Uh, and if you can do that, um, all wrapped in some really great branding, you're going to win kind of regardless of how the, the goalposts shift. I mean, frankly, that's the way I advise people to compete in, in categories that are heavy with Chinese brands, right? Just out-compete them on, on your branding, on your understanding of the customer, on your messaging. Right? These are all things that you can do, even if you can't win on price. Um, and more often than not, they tend to, to be enough to succeed. So how do you find time to do all this stuff? You're writing a newsletter, you're writing on LinkedIn, you're buying businesses, you're running a business with a, with a part, uh, old high school buddy. Um, you're, you're, you're consuming a lot of stuff that's out there. Um, and you have a family, you said. Yeah, yeah. I have two little girls who, uh, you know, they're my true bosses. Um, five o'clock rolls around and they pop in my office and everything shuts down. Uh, but you know what, Kevin, the truth is it, it's, it's super hard and task management, um, focus. I struggle with it just like many other sellers. What I try to do, what I've maybe learned over time, uh, is to try to orient myself toward the things where they're most likely to have the biggest impact. Um, you know, I, I kind of do an effort versus impact two by two uh, matrix and try to live in that corner where I'm low, low effort, high impact. That's a, you, you don't, you're not always uh, gifted with opportunities like that. So I'm often in the high effort, high impact category, but um, you know, that's where I try to live. That's how I try to prioritize. And outside of that, I stick to things that I'm passionate about because even if they aren't, you know, high impact and, and remunerative, at least I can do something that I enjoy in my heart. Um, so yeah, the truth is <laughs> don't have it figured out. I'm, you know, jumping around to different things like everyone else. Uh, but the hope is I can continue to live, deliver value to the Amazon community with my newsletter. The hope is that I can continue to go out and find some good businesses uh, to acquire and, and build up a little portfolio. The hope is that I can uh, get in front of more people in, in live events in the future, uh, you mentioned ASGTG. Uh, I don't know if it's come out yet, so apologies, Ed, if I'm leaking this. But um, I know you're, you're speaking. speaking. You're speaking yeah, there, you're, you're and, speaking and so am I. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it'll it'll be fun. That's January 10th in uh, in uh, Brooklyn. That's a that's a really cool event. Uh, I, it's a it's an intense crowd. Uh, <laughs> they're they're like they're like in your face. Like they're eager to learn. They like lots of questions. They're they're sponges, but I, I, that's one of my favorite events to speak at. The buffet is amazing uh, that he, he puts on. And but then, yeah, and then you're speaking at Billion Dollar Seller Summit, the virtual event in yeah. February. Yeah, well. that's right. Thank uh, you for the invite. Yeah, you're speaking at that. So that's that's going to be a uh, really, really good, too. 
Yeah, so I'm finding time for some of these uh, li little events and speaking engagements where, you know, I, I, I really respect the audience or I really respect the organizers. Um, so, of course, it's always an easy yes for you. Uh, it was an easy yes for ASG, TG. But outside of that, I, I usually just say no and put my head down and keep working. I got to learn to say no a little bit better. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I, I enjoy, you know, I, I like going to some of these events because it's my tribe. It's my people, you know, mm -hmm. sitting around with Norm and uh, you know, I'll see you in Orlando. You know, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't, I, well, I'm not speaking at the event in Orlando. Um, uh, I spoke at his last one, uh, but I'm going to New Jersey to speak on the 18th at an event uh, uh, over there uh, that Gatita and some of the guys uh, from the Ecom Cooperative are putting together. Uh, but I'm going to Orlando for one day uh, just uh, because I'm like, you know what? There's some people there. Like I've never, I want to meet you in person. So yeah. I haven't met you in person. So you and a couple other people that are on his list, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to head over there for a day and then I'll pop over to New Jersey. But, um, that, but that, that, that re-energizes me and that, that gives me time away from just working and, and getting ideas and making connections. And uh, I think that's an important part of, uh, what we do. Yeah, it, it really is. It, and it all goes back. I'm going to, I'm going to bring this full circle since we're probably getting close to time here, Kevin, we, we started this out talking about travel. Uh, you know, you're, you're a world traveler hitting 94 countries, but you're also kind of a, a people traveler, right? Like you, 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 you genuinely want to meet and connect with people. I'm the same way. I don't, I can't do it as much these days with, with two young kids, but, um, you get so much energy and you get better because of it. Hearing people's views, hearing people's, you know, hacks, right? You, you, you learn so much from just sitting in the room with someone that has been in different places or is you know, ahead of you a, a couple steps. And I, I love that you do that. I, I try to do it, or I'm trying to do it more, uh, but it's tough. It is. It is. Well, if people want to reach out to you, uh, again, it's uh, the best thing is what, LinkedIn, you said? Yeah, LinkedIn uh, is a great place to connect with me. I also uh, am pretty active on Twitter. I have kind of a fun handle. It's called Bearded Egg FBA. Uh, there, <laughs> there's, a, there's a story behind that involving a bet that I made with a guy named Molson Hart, who... Um, is the founder of a toy brand called Brain Flakes. Um, but uh, yeah, Twitter, LinkedIn, those are two great places to reach me and you know, always happy to talk shop with Amazon sellers. Can you spell that again for the people that just in case? Yeah, so Bearded Egg, B-E-A-R-D-E-D-E-G-G-F-B-A. -E 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 awesome, that's at Twitter. And then on LinkedIn, it's John Durkitz, right? Yeah, that's right. N-D-E-R-K-I-T-S. Yeah, that's right. Awesome, John. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today, man. Uh, this has been uh, awesome. I'm sure we could sit here and do this for about four more hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I next, it. next time we'll do it in person over some, some drinks and cigars. There we go, man. Awesome, man. Well, thanks again for coming on. Really enjoyed this episode with John. Some great stuff we talked about there. We kind of bounced all around, but I think you got some good takeaways from that and hopefully got you, got you thinking. We'll be back again next week with another great episode with Perry Belcher. Perry is one of the most famous internet marketers out there. He's not an Amazon seller per se. He sells on Amazon, but he does a lot of other stuff. He's exited multiple businesses, generated like a billion dollars in sales. So that's going to be a really fascinating and interesting episode. So be sure to tune in for that next week. Also, make sure you sign up for the Billion Dollar Sellers newsletter, billiondollarsellers.com, and look for an announcement soon on my free webinar December 1st on how to set up a newsletter for your physical products business. Before I leave you today, I want to leave you some words of wisdom. The present always determines the past, but the future determines your mastery of the present. The present always determines the past, but your future determines your mastery of the present. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday.